Welcome to Nature's Newsroom at the heart of COP26. I'm Maitri Sita Raman, and I'm joined by Professor Mike Hoffman, from, uh, who's Professor Emeritus at uh, Cornell University. He's also the author of a book he's been working on for a long time and very relevant to all of us called Our Changing Menu. It's basically about our connection to our food and how it affects the environment. Today is Energy Day. Welcome, Mike. Um, Thank you. I think the question for us all is, we all know energy goes into our food, but truly, how do we impact our planet with just the food we consume? Well, think about the whole food chain from what the farmer's doing to produce this crop somewhere in the world, transportation, storage, processing, the retail store, on and on and on to when we cook it in our house. There's an enormous amount of energy used to get that food from the farm to the table. That's one thing, but there's a lot of options in there, how it's transported, how it's used, how much energy is used, and farmers are adapting. They're doing already solving some of these problems through regenerative agriculture, for example, and precision agriculture, where they're just the right amount of pesticide or herbicide is applied to the field if that's an option they use. How much work has been done within the agri world to um, address the climate change issue? How really on top of their agenda is it? Because farmers at, at one time, at one point, are also dealing with climate change itself in terms mm -hmm. of the product that they're building. Well, farmers are on the front line, and I'm going to speak primarily for U.S. farmers. I'm most familiar. They need to stay in business, so they're going to adapt. And what they often adapt to is, is climate smart agriculture with a focus on soil. That's critically important. It sequesters carbon. If you're going to grow a crop, you need a healthy soil. Water management is the same thing. So they're being more efficient using the tools available in climate smart agriculture, including new varieties of crops that are more resilient that are being developed by our scientists. So, so again, they're, staying, they're working, striving to stay in business and feed us. Well, they, they try and stay in business, and they're doing a really good job here at COP because we have a massive menu, and everyone's quite upset about the menu here because the carbon emissions from the menu here, we have things like venison and fish and chips, uh, which are quite British, um, but everyone's quite upset about the level of carbon emissions. What could have been done? What struck you when you grabbed your meal here at COP26? I think it's important for what, as we say, practice what you preach. So I wasn't aware of this issue. It's been brought to my attention. I've been eating elsewhere. But I think, bottom line, uh, I think a better job could have been done given why we are here. Now, I want to also reflect on uh, a reduction in, say, red meat. Don't forget about the global community, many of which, billions of which, depend on red meat as a part of their nutrition. So maybe those of us in the rich, rich countries can, yes, uh, I'll avoid that. But other places, it's a little different. So run us through the key messaging from our changing menu, your book. Um, what were your key findings and what are the key takeaways people can uh, have from your research of the food they eat and how they can reduce their uh, carbon footprint? That's part of the story, mm -hmm. is how to reduce our carbon footprint. And we talk about what farmers are doing, but the message in the book is essentially using food as a tool, as a means to tell everyone, to the best of my knowledge, we all eat, what is happening to their food. Some of the changes are very subtle, but so we literally have a menu in there from before dinner drinks, wine, beer, gin, oh, sorry, distilled spirit, gin is my favorite, through coffee and dessert. And it's a celebration of food. It's not doom and gloom. And in there we tell the story, well, by the way, climate change is bringing about these changes. This is what others are doing. This is what you can do. Well, that is a very positive note indeed. And thank you for that, Mike, because I think everyone needs to hear that there is something they can do on their own plates, on Absolute. their own dinner tables. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. Thank you.